What is up, everybody? We are back here at King Film Sports for the NFL Week 16 game picks and betting locks. We've got eight picks lined up for you guys today. Uh, and a reminder that we did post a playoff picture analysis and predictions video yesterday. So be sure to watch that after you watch this one, uh, as well as comment your predictions down below. So for the week 15 action, it started off quite well. We had Niners minus three at Seahawks. That one wasn't a sweat at all. Niners covered there. Then we had Vikings Colts over 47. No drama in terms of the total in this game as it went way over, but uh, Vikings do get the 33 point comeback win. Then we had the Browns minus two and a half. They won in a sloppy game at home against the Ravens. Then Falcon Saints barely goes under the 43, but we get that win there. Panthers end up losing to the Steelers, so we get a loss there. And then the Eagles-Bears, they made a late push to get the over, but it just wasn't enough. Only 45 points scored there, so it gets the under. Then Raiders-Patriots. Raiders blow a big lead to start out the game, but then come back and in miraculous fashion win on one of the dumbest plays by the Patriots that I've ever seen. So we get the win there. Very lucky for that. Then Commanders-Giants on Sunday night. Commanders just didn't come to play, and Giants got a defensive touchdown. A few iffy calls by the refs as well, and the Commanders lose outright there. Then Rams plus eight. Thought this was a great value number, but the Packers end up blowing out the Rams, uh, so we don't end up covering there. So all in all, we went five and four on the week, which was good enough to get us up plus 0.6 units and up 17.4 units on the season hoping to do a little bit better this upcoming week but not too shabby there and then the game picks getting very good at 148 and 74 to 67 percent so now we get to the week 16 locks and we started out here with a big game in the afc playoff picture jaguars at jets give me the jaguars plus 100 on the money line I just think they're playing great football right now. They've got a few big wins with Trevor Lawrence, and he's been one of the best quarterbacks since week nine. He's top of the league in a lot of the passing statistics, and I suspect that that continues here. The Jets have a pretty stout defense, but I think the Jags will be able to put up at least 24 points. And then as for the Jets, I'm a lot more high on them when they have Mike White starting, but with Zach Wilson, I just do not trust them at all. He even played pretty well against Detroit last week and it wasn't even good enough for the victory. I just think this Jags team is too good for the Jets. I think their defense will present a challenge for Zach Wilson and on a short week, give me Jacksonville on the road. Next, we get to the Lions at the Panthers and give me the Lions minus two and a half here. I know this is a bit of a trap line. Lions coming on the road. Panthers in a bit of a bounce back spot uh, after that bad performance that they had against Pittsburgh last week, but I still think that the Lions won six of their last seven playing with immense momentum right now. It is a bit concerning that this is their second straight game on the road, uh, but they did beat the Jets, who are a playoff contender, and the Panthers kind of fading right now. I know they did show some fight against the Seahawks uh, with Steve Wilkes and Sam Darnold, but now we see that the Seahawks got exposed, so that win doesn't have quite as much allure as it once did. At home here, I just do not think they have enough firepower to keep up with this high-flying Detroit offense. So give me the Lions, minus 2.5 on the road there. Next game, we get to the Saints at the Browns. This game is going to be played in horrible conditions. It's going to be windy. It's going to be snowing, and it is going to be very cold. Sub-zero temperatures here in Cleveland. And all that spells out is a Browns win. Give me the Browns, minus 2.5 points. I think they're going to run the ball very effectively with Nick Chubb on the ground and Kareem Hunt. And then Deshaun Watson, he's playing a bit better, but more importantly, the defense has been great when he is in, uh, and I think they will stop this Saints offense. Saints have been decent against bad defenses, but you saw what happened when they went up against the Niners. They put up a donut. I think something similar could happen here. All in all, I think it's a very low-scoring game, uh, very similar to Ravens-Browns last week, but I think that Cleveland ends up on top and they cover the minus two and a half there. Next, we get to the afternoon slate where we got the Commanders at the Niners. Very big playoff implications in the NFC. And in this one, give me the Niners to win, but the lock is the over 39. I just think that this 49ers offense under Brock Purdy is clicking, even without Debo. They were very effective last week and put up 21 points a couple minutes into the third quarter. Didn't score again. I think they could have 
uh, but they were up by a lot of points. Also, Robbie Gold missed a field goal in that one. I think they put up at least 24 in this one, or maybe a little bit more. I think their defense will set them up with some great opportunities because the commanders are prone to turning over the football. And I also think that the commander's offense will have a bit of a bounce back week here uh, after that dismal showing on Sunday Night Football. So I think it spells an over here. I think you're looking at a score potentially of 27-17, somewhere in that neighborhood, and get the over of 39. Next, we get to the Cowboys-Eagles and a big development here is that Jalen Hurts very unlikely to play. It's probably going to be Gardner Minshew on the road here in Dallas. In this one, I'm taking Dallas at home minus the five points. Uh, I know Gardner Minshew is a decent quarterback, but the Cowboys defense got shredded last week and they've been great all year. I think they need to atone for that. Uh, I think they're going to have a great day against Gardner Minshew here if he does end up playing. And I think that the Cowboys offense played great last week. And I think that they're going to do that once again to get back into the win column. This is a big game in terms of their confidence going into the playoffs because they're likely going to be in that five seed and have to do it all on the road. So being a big time contender in the division, big rivalry matchup, I think that Dallas comes to play and covers the five there. Now we get to the night game where we've got the Raiders at the Steelers. Give me the Raiders money line plus 140 in this spot. I do not know why the Steelers are favored in this matchup at all. I think it should probably be a pick em, if not Raiders, minus a couple points here. The Steelers might have Kenny Pickett in this one or Mitch Trubisky. I don't even think it matters at all. The Steelers only won against the Panthers because they dominated the ground game, especially in that second half and dominated time of possession. I don't think they're going to be able to do that against this Raiders team. I just trust that this Raiders team down the stretch, I know that they've had some heartbreaking losses, but... In recent weeks, other than that Rams game, uh, they've been very good in close finishes. I think this one comes down to a field goal late, and I think Derek Carr, Devontae Adams, Mac Hollins, uh, and that offense gets it going, and I think they get the victory in the clutch there. Great value as well, plus 140. The Raiders are a lock. Now we get to the Christmas games. Only play here is the Broncos at Rams. Give me the Rams plus 120 on the money line. I know this is not a very appealing game to watch, but... The Rams, I don't know why they're underdogs at home here. They have Baker Mayfield. I know he wasn't great in Green Bay, uh, but in good temperature and conditions here, I think he'll be a lot better. Uh, and I just think he's the better quarterback than Brett Rippon on the other side. I know that Denver uh, ran up the score a little bit against the Cardinals in the second half, putting up 24 points. But I just think that the Rams offense is better here and they will bounce back and win that there. Finally, we get to the Monday night game. We've got the Chargers at the Colts and give me the Los Angeles Chargers minus three and a half here. I think they're going to start to cook here as the season wanes. Uh, I think Herbert played pretty poorly against that Tennessee defense and I think he's going to play a lot better against this atrocious Indianapolis secondary. I mean, they were just leaking points and yards at the end of that game, blew that 33 point lead. I don't think there's any way they can bounce back here under interim coach Jeff Saturday in this one. Very sad scenes there. It would be very shocking if they got this win. I think this one goes to the playoff contenders, the Los Angeles Chargers there on Monday night. So with that being said, let me know what you guys think of my eight predictions here. Do you agree or are you fading them? Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you all in the next one.